Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I show you my full workflow with Lightroom when I'm on the travel. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France. And I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel and get twice a week notification from YouTube with free stuff. And click here if you want to get the raw files of all my past episodes, hundreds of raw files from all over the world. All right, in last week's episode, I showed you how to play around with selective clarity to go away from the HDR look that we see everywhere since Lightroom came out with a clarity slider and how to make a more natural result. This week, it's not a retouching tutorial. It's, I'm trying to answer a question I get a lot is, how do you deal with catalogs and Lightroom when you travel? Like, when I travel, I like to shoot photos, I like to edit them, I like to retouch them on the way in the hotel, do all I can and then put everything back in my main catalog as I come back. So it takes a very specific workflow, which I'm going to show you. Also, at the end of this video, you have a special presentation from my buddy, Mike Brown. He's got a new course called the seven building blocks of photography. Check it out. It's amazing. So let me show you my full workflow when I travel with Lightroom. So as I travel, what I try to do is uh, I want to retouch all my photos on the go. I don't want to wait that I'm back in my office with a big iMac and all my hard drive to retouch. You know, sometime I'm in the hotel, I have time after days of shoot and I want to see what the photos are going to look like. So the, the way I organize things is that I have, I always create like, for example, I did this Paris in the spring. Uh, we went out with 10 photographers for a full week. I was not coming home. I stayed at the hotel because we're getting up at five every morning to get the sunset. Uh, and then we stayed very late for the sunrise. So a very intense week. And so I took 604 photos during that week. And um, so I have one main directory and then I have subdirectories where I have for every day or locations uh, what I shot. Okay, some of them I have retouched like this one, this one. This one is already retouched. Some of them are not retouched. You know, uh, I did some of the work there. Now, what I like to do is because I got a lot of hard drive space on my main machine, I like to get all the 604 photos out there. One thing you can do if you're short on storage is you can go and put like a first star, for example, on all the photos you actually only want to export to your main storage. You know, the ones you think might be good. The thing is, I'm very surprised sometimes I, I come back years later to search some old photos and some photos that I didn't like at the time came out to be really good photos like years later. So I have this habit of keeping everything. So this is my Lightroom on the go. It has uh, 8,000 uh, photos in it, raw files, 8,000 raw files. And uh, the, uh, my main station has got over 80 or 90,000. This is just you know the, the Lightroom library that I use for every travel. So. Let's say, so if you only wanted to export a few, you could put, you know, for a star and you would go to the main, the parent directory and just filter only the four star photos and you will get only the four star photos, um, you know, selected. Now, I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take everything. I'm going to press command A to select everything. Oh, before that, I just want to show you. So that's the, that was the week of Paris and spring, but you know, here is some photo, Tampa, March, 2014, this is some photo US 2013. Actually, that's not from the US, probably was wrong there. But anyways, each directory has a main directory and there is like subdirectories of wherever I go in the US. So now let's say that I want to export all these photos, all the raw files, including all the retouching, all the selecting, all the metadata, all the tagging, everything I did while on travel. Well, what I do is I select the main directory, I go to file, and uh, I export as a catalog. Then I'm gonna jump to my hard drive, uh, Surge External 2, and um, I have this thing called Temp Transfer to Main Disk folder. You can call it whatever you want. And I'm gonna call this, uh, for example, well, Paris and Spring. Now I already did it, so I'm not gonna redo it because it takes forever. But one thing that's important is you could uh, select export selected photos only, which is not what I did. Exporting catalog of 604 photos. Look at it, 604, that's what I want. Export negative files, you want that. Now, build include smart preview. I don't, it's gonna take a lot more time. I don't do that because I'm gonna export on my main drive, which is always connected. So I don't need the 
smart preview technology. What the smart preview technology is, you've got your photos on, a, on an external drive, that external drive is disconnected, you can still do some retouching uh, because they have a smart preview inside the catalog. It, but it takes a bit of space and on 604 photos, it would take too much space. Uh, include developer preview, yes, because it already, you know, when I cataloged, when I imported like 600 photos, it created like a little preview of each photo. I want that. So make sure that the export negative is there. So then as a result, what you have is on the hard drive, this uh, temp transfer to main disk, Paris and Spring. So I've got a catalog here, a Lightroom catalog file, LRCAT, and then you got all the photos uh, which are there in uh, the exact same order that they were you know, with all the DNG files, everything is there. So that's, to, that's done now. I'm, I'm finished with uh, exporting it from my, uh, uh, from my hard drive to my hard drive on my small MacBook Pro. And now I'm gonna jump over to the main station and show you how I'm gonna put it, import it into my main catalog. But before, uh, before I do that, I just want to give you a little idea on how do I back up on travel. When I'm traveling, I have all my photos on an external hard drive and I, I did uh, I subscribe to Backblaze and Backblaze for $5 per computer uh, backs up everything online for me on, on the travel. Now, of course, for this, you need to have a strong internet. Uh, ideally, I would need to have two hard drives so I could double everything. Uh, honestly, I don't do it. What I do is I keep it on the card. I keep it on the CF card. I have it on the hard drive. Plus, I have it online as a, a to backblaze.com. So that was just a little thing. That's how I make sure I don't lose photos on travel. CF card, hard drive, plus backblaze. Every time you gotta have three copies of your photos at all time. All right, so now I'm back on my main desktop, the iMac 27 inch, 32 gigabytes of memory. So uh, you know, the real deal with, um, I use a lot of external hard drives, but they are RAID hard drives. So I have got two times three gigabytes being mirrored at all time. And this is where I, I this is my main catalog with 94,000 photos. And so the Paris in spring week, I want to get it in there. Remember we exported it as a catalog. I connected uh, my small external hard drive to that iMac. And now all I have to do is go to file and import from another catalog. Okay. Then I'm going to go to search external to temp transfer to main disk. I show you Paris and spring and I just select the catalog. I don't care about the whole pass where all the photos are. I click on choose and uh, it says preparing to import from catalog. Now I've already done it because it takes forever. Uh, but so it, it all right, so here it is. So this is all the photos. And um, basically, uh, you have to, uh, you have the choice. The thing is, new photos now found because it's already exported. But here on file handling, you have the possibility to either add. Uh, now it's not there because I've already done it. But add will just uh, catalog the photos in that Lightroom catalog, but it will keep them on a small external hard drive. That is not what you want. What you want is to copy and then all you have to do is choose a pass, which is what I did. I choose the pass and I selected copy and I pressed import. Now I've already done that, that's why it's all grayed out. And once you've done that, well, in your main catalog, now if I go down here, like I put it into my hard drive on the Paris. So um, uh, here it is. Uh, so I have Paris, there's all the, th the stuff I'm doing in Paris and now I have now it kept the only problem that it kept the whole uh, past uh, of my external right. So Surge Exxon 2 was the name of uh, you know, the hard drive, Inspiration for Training, Paris in Spring, and then I've got all the little things. Now if you want to really uh, be very neat, I could just select all that and put it uh, and drag and drop it directly, uh, for example, on the Paris so that I wouldn't have all this uh, little thing, but I actually don't mind it. I know that when it's from Surge external 2, it's something that came in from my hard drive. But the good thing is now everything's imported into my main workstation and all the retouching that I did, like this one, for example, I can go to the develop module and show you the before and after, before and after. So everything that I did while I was in the hotel has been taken into account. The, this one is rated one star and I just can keep on working. 
So this is how I do it uh, when being on travel. And, uh, and voila, I hope uh, it learned something. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm saying that's the way I've been doing it for years. And a lot of people have been asking about it. And I hope uh, this uh, will help some of you. And uh, voila, voila. And this course, by the way, uh, called uh, Paris in Spring is coming out next week. It's an amazing course where I'm going to show you all the main photos I've retouched over a full week of incredible photo uh, taking and retouching. All right, let's get back to me. All right, guys, I hope you like this tutorial. Now I'm going to pass over to Mike Brown. He's got a new great course coming out called the seven building blocks of photography. Mike Brown is an amazing photographer and teacher, especially on all the basics of photography itself, how to get the right exposures, how to get the right effect that you want. So here is my buddy, Mike. He's gonna explain you his amazing new course. Thanks for having me back on your channel again, Serge. It's a privilege and a pleasure as always. So, bonjour, mesdames and messieurs. My name is Mike Brown. I'm an English photographer. I live in the corner of a field in the middle of nowhere, and I never, ever, ever make jokes at other people's expense. Now, look, Serge is the pixel wizard. You follow his tutorials, you're going to seriously learn how to pimp up those images and get them zinging when you look at them on screen. But before you do that, you've got to have a great original file in the first place, one that's well composed, well lit, well exposed, beautifully executed with the maximum amount of data in the file so that when you do come to perform surgery on it a bit later on, you're going to get the maximum out of it. My seven weekly seven building blocks of photography course takes all that good stuff you already know like apertures, shutter speeds, depth of field, focal lengths, composition, light, the creative and technical aspects of photography. And it will take you through a step-by-step -step process to how to link those things together for pretty much any image you wanna take. You need to begin at the image and kind of work backwards. You've got to reverse your photography. Now the seven building blocks of photography, uh, seven weekly emails, you'll be sent worksheets, you'll be sent exercises to perform and over five hours of unique video content, which is not available anywhere else. If you're interested to find out more, click this little button just here on screen. You'll need to have your annotation switched on for it to work or just search seven building blocks of photography. You'll find my site and there's all the information you need there. Guys, I hope you go for it because it will revolutionize your thinking and your photography. So back to search for this week's tutorial. Thanks for listening, guys.